I've been trying to make this argument more recently um, and might write an essay on it is, you know, people talk about the great filter, right? And which is, again, this like doomsday thing that, you know, people want to say there's no aliens out there because something terrible happened to them. Um, and it matters whether that's in our, in, our, in our past or our future as to the longevity of our species, presumably, which is why people find it interesting. But I think it's not, it's not a physical filter. It's not like things go extinct. I think it's literally we don't have the technology to see them. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, and you could see that with microscopes. I mean, we didn't know there were microbes on this table for our tables for thousands of years or telescopes. Like there's so much of the universe we can't see. And then basically what we have done as a species is outsource our physical perceptions to technology, building microscopes based on our eyes, um, you know, and building seismometers based on our sense of feelings, like feel earthquakes and things. And AI is basically we're trying to outsource what's actually happening in our thinking apparatus into machines now, into technological devices. And maybe that's the key technology that's going to allow us to see things like us and see the universe in a totally different way. But you kind of mentioned the great filter. Do you think there's a way through technology to stop being able to see stuff? So can you take stuff backwards? I think so, yeah. Did did you imply that with the great, so like... Well, no, I mean, I think there's a great perceptual filter in the sense that a, a example of life evolving on a planet over billions of years has to acquire a certain amount of knowledge and technology to actually recognize the phenomena that it is. Well, that's the sense I have is, uh, I mean, you talk with physicists, engineers in general, there's this kind of idea that we have most of the tools already to hear the signal. But to me, it feels like we don't have any of the tools no, to see the signal. Doing. Yeah, I agree. That's that's the biggest, like yeah. to hear. We don't have the tools to really hear, to see. Yeah. Aliens are everywhere. We just don't have the... Exactly. The, um, yeah, I mean, well, oh, that's... I mean, I got this in part, actually, because you were like, you know, la- last time I was here, you was like, look at the carpet. You know, could it, like, if you had an alien detector, would the car- carpet be aliens? I mean, I think we really don't. Uh, I, so I, they would be... I, but Which the aliens means? would nevertheless have a high assembly index or produce things of yeah. high assembly index. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And those things of a high assembly index, uh, you have to have a detector that can recognize high assembly index in all its forms. Yeah. Yes. That's it. That's it. Take data, construct assembly space. Yeah. Those patterns, basically. So one way to think about high assembly index is interesting patterns uh, of basic ingredients. I can give you an example because, uh, I mean, in molecules, we've been talking about in objects, but we're also trying to do it in um, spatial trajectories. Like, imagine you're just, um, like, I, I always get bothered by the fact that, like, when you look at birds flocking, you can describe that with, like, a simple Boyd's model or, like, you know, people use spin glass to describe animal behavior. And those are, like, really simple physics models. Yet you're looking at a system that you know has agency and there's intelligence in those birds. And I, and basically like you can't help but think there must be some statistical signatures of the fact that they're, those are, that's a group of agents versus, you know, like, I don't know, you know, the physics example, maybe like, I don't know, Brownian motion or something. Um, And so what we're trying to do is actually apply assembly to trajectory data to try to say there's a minimal amount of um, causal history to build up certain trajectories for observed agents as like an agency detector for behavior. Do you think, do you think it's possible to do some like, like Boyd's or uh, those kinds of things like artificial, like cellular automata play with those ideas with assembly, um, with assembly theory? Have you found any useful, really simple mathematical um, like simulation tools that allow you to play with these concepts. Yeah. So like one, of course, you're doing mass spec in, in this physical space with, with chemistry, mm-hmm. but it just seems, well, I mean, computer science person maybe, it seems easier to just- I agree with you. And, and sexier <laughs> in terms of uh, tweeting visual information on uh, Twitter or Instagram, more importantly, um, to play like, here's an organism of a low, assembly index and here's an organism of a high assembly index and let's watch them create more and more memories uh, and more and more complex objects. And so like in mathematically you get to observe what that looks like to build up an intuition what assembly index is like. We are building a toolkit right now. So I think it's a really good idea. But what we've got to do is I, I'm kind of still obsessed with the infrastructure required. And one of the reasons why I was pushing on information and mathematics mm-hmm. when human beings when human being, we take a lot of the infrastructure for granted, and and I think we have to strip that back a bit for going mm-hmm. forward. But you're absolutely right. I would agree that I think the the fact that we exist in the universe is like 
I can see there are lots of people going to disagree with the statement, but I don't think I don't think Sarah will. But I don't, I don't know. The fact that objects exist, I don't think anyone on Earth can dis- will disagree that objects can exist elsewhere, right? But they will disagree that life can exist elsewhere. But what perhaps I'm trying to say is that the 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 acquisition, the universe's ability to acquire memory, is the very first step for building life, and that must be that's so easy to happen. So therefore, alien life is everywhere because all alien life is is uh, those memories being compressed and minimalized, and the alien equivalent of the cell working. So I think that we will build new technologies to find aliens, um, but we do not, we need to understand what we are first, and and how we go through from physics to chemistry to biology. The most interesting thing, as you're saying, between these two organisms, different assemblies, is when you get into biology, biology gets more and more weird, more and more contingent. Where physics is prob- chemistry is less weird because the rules of chemistry are smaller than the rules of biology, and then going away to physics, where you have a very nicely tangible number of ways of arranging things and i think assembly theory just helps you appreciate that Mm -hmm. and so once we get there my dream is that we are just going to be able to suddenly are i mean i'm i mean i'm maybe just being really arrogant here i don't mean to be arrogant it's just again i've just got this hammer called assembly and everything's a nail but i think that once we crack it we'll be able to use assembly theory plus telescopes to find aliens 